While we are working with Angular 2, we're going to be using observables a lot. We've already seen observables at work when we use the form, the model-driven way. Now, what exactly are observables, though? Let's do a little talk on these, and we're not going to go too far in depth. We're going to save this topic for another course that's going to go f much farther in depth. But for now, let's talk a good overview so that we know overall what observables are going to do for us. So far in the JavaScript world, we have had callbacks. And then we moved on to promises, which was a better way to manage how the flow of our application worked. And now we're going to move forward again, and we have observables. Now, don't get scared of this. Observables are just the next step forward, and they're actually really, really easy to use. The number of benefits that they give us for the small amount of code changes that we have to make are definitely worth it. So while we're talking about observables, they come in a library called RxJS. Now, RxJS is an external library that we're going to have to pull in for our application, and we already did that in our Angular 2 starter. In the package.json, we brought in RxJS. RxJS is a separate library that is used, and we can find that at reactivex.io. And you can think of RxJS as the lodash for events. Now, I know we want to keep our applications as lean as possible, so why are we bringing in another external library? RxJS is actually really cool, and once you see how we can be used, you'll notice that there are a lot of benefits to it, and that's why the Angular team has embraced observables. Observables are even being talked about as being brought to the JavaScript spec for ES7. So this is something that we could see in native JavaScript. So we've talked about observables and RxJS. What exactly is an observable, though? A lot of times we'll use observables with HTTP, as we'll see in this course. So a promise is something that we send out once, and we get one piece of information back. An observable is actually data over a given time period. Let's take a look at a diagram that's going to help us understand how observables work. If we look at promises, we just have one call to get one piece of data. An observable is a data stream over time of a call that we can make multiple times. So really what we're saying is we're going to have a piece of data, which we make a call just like a promise. So we have information here. Then we can actually subscribe to that data stream and see how the data works over time. So if we make a call to go grab, let's say, comments on a post, we can watch that stream. And as new comments come in, we can see that data over time. This really helps us make these real-time reactive applications where we can actually react on new data as it's coming through our stream. This gives us a lot of benefit for our very little code changes here and there, and the code changes actually really help to make our applications much more readable. Let's take a look at some examples of how this can help us. Why do we want to use observables? So observables, we can handle multiple events, just like we saw in that data stream, we can handle all of those events. Observables are also cancelable. Let's say, for example, we're creating an autocomplete box where we type in O, B, S, E. And as we type in each letter, we want to make a request to go get the information. You can cancel all of the previous calls so that only the latest call is being used. Now, a really cool thing I like about observables is that we have operators to manipulate the data. We can treat asynchronous data like collections. So we can map, we can filter, and we'll use map extensively in our application. Another really cool thing is that if an observable makes a call and it doesn't go through, we can actually tell it to retry that call maybe three times, four times, however many times we'd like. We can also replay a call so that we can take an HTTP call and replay it. So really, this is taking how we deal with asynchronous calls to the next level. We can handle it in a much more manageable way where we can delete calls, we can manipulate data when we get it, and we can even retry calls. Let's take a look at how the HTTP library in Angular 2 handles this. To get an observable, we return this HTTP.get, and we can just pass in a URL for the API. And that will return an observable. Then when we want to listen and get the information out of that observable, Usually, if you are using a promise, you would just say getusers.then. Here, you can use getusers.subscribe. 
So now it's more of a thought process that we're subscribing to a full-on data stream as opposed to just using one point in time of data. Next up, it's not too important to know, but we're going to keep it in mind. We have cold versus hot observables. If we go back here, when we declare get users, we have a cold observable since nobody has subscribed to it yet. And as soon as we subscribe to it in that second code block there, we are creating a hot observable. Let's talk about the operators we can use on our asynchronous data now. We can map data to however we want it to look. We can filter data to get only the pieces of data that we want, concat, flat map, reduce, and every. Now there are a lot more operators and you can use any combination of those in your own applications. We'll be using map a lot in this application and you can see exactly how that works. So all of that is really quick concept of how observables work and why observables are the next step forward and why we're using them extensively in Angular 2. Moving forward, let's take all of this concept and let's move it into our application so we can see the code and see how it actually benefits us. You'll notice that the code is not hard to understand at all. It's very, very easy to use. And I think after this course, you'll come to like observables and prefer them over promises.